Hey everyone, Terry Booth's update of the week. So three things right off the bat. Uh, happy Thursday, by the way. And first thing is that I'll be doing another 14 day extended water fasting. So this time, not 10 days, this is a full 14 days. Now, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, make a big deal out of it. It's just, I'm gonna do it. And uh, <laughs> apparently when you make a public announcement in front of other people, uh, it raises your accountability and likelihood of success of that goal by like 40 to 50% or something. That was a statistic. <laughs> That's why I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. 14 day fast, 14 days. So basically, it's also in a little bit of honor of Ramadan and so many uh, Muslim people are already fasting so um, uh, diligently, as you all know, and their fasting schedule is crazy. I th I'm pretty sure it's a dry fast. They can't even drink water, I think. Um, so they, what they're doing is a lot harder, but uh, basically I'm going to do an extended water fast, no food for how many hours is 14 days? 300 something, 330 hours or something like that. Uh, no food, just like tea, coffee, very low, z almost zero calories. And uh, I'm going to try that again. Now, uh, a lot of you have seen my previous video and I'm not just doing this for weight loss. I'm not trying to get thin. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it's good in many different ways. And I fully suggest that you uh, do intermittent fasting. 16, 8 is good. 24 hours is awesome. And you probably, this is very extreme, the extended water fasting, but uh, it, it's got some amazing benefits that are beyond intermittent fasting. So that's what I'm going to do. There are a lot of different YouTubers that, that do uh, preach it. Um, well, Dr. Jason Fong and Dr. Berg and Thomas De Lauer are some of the very good resources for learning more about fasting. And to be completely honest, they don't really endorse extended fasting that much, but uh, I'm gonna do it because <laughs> I did 10 days. So 14, uh, it, theoretically, it shouldn't be that bad. And one of the things I, I also want to mention is that fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease um, is a very prevalent nowadays in the US. Apparently, more than 25%, more than a quarter of all Americans have fatty liver disease. And... Um, Fatty liver doesn't happen because you eat a lot of dietary fat. It's, it's not happening because you eat a lot of ice cream or avocados. <laughs> Apparently, it comes from eating a lot of carbs. And when you have a lot of glucose in your blood, blood that you don't use, then, you know, as your, your body turns all that glucose in the blood into fat, stored fat for later energy, uh, stored energy for fuel. But uh, a lot of people just eat a lot of carbs and don't work out and don't use that glucose. So all of that becomes fat as you know, and a lot of that stored fat goes into the liver and your liver becomes like a freaking foie gras size. And then it starts messing up your body. It starts freaking exploding <laughs> into a, just a mass of fat. And then you eventually need a liver transplant because uh, it, it, there's irreversible, irreversible damage. So that's why I learned recently from many people. Uh, I think it was Dr. Berg, to be honest with you, uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I, I learned everything from YouTube. But uh, you know, that, that was such an amazing thing to learn because my mom has always worried about me having a, like a weak liver. <laughs> I don't have a weak liver. It's just that uh, there are a lot of Asians with hereditary liver problems. And she's always been feeding me supplements to make my liver healthier. Turns out one of the most healthiest things you can do for your liver is not eat. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do that. And, and when you don't eat, when you fast, your liver is going to turn to ketones for energy and it, it's actually going to be able to use up that stored fat um, and essentially cleanse itself and not, not be vulnerable to uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So that's one thing that I wanted to kind of spread awareness on. Number two, another story about myself is that I'm doing, I'm on day seven of a 30-day plank challenge. There's a woman, Canadian woman named Dana Glowaka. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She does a plank for four hours. She's like a world champion or something. And she's a vegan athlete. And she inspired me so much that uh, I adapted her uh, plank daily um, challenge for 30 days. I'm on day seven right now. And it's really hard. <laughs> but um, I'm already seeing some very good improvements. And, and planks are amazing for your core but also to prevent injury when you're doing other kinds of exercises. And uh, it's been very fun as well. So I 
hope to be able to post that when the challenge is over. And last thing, last but not least, I wanted to spread some awareness on the effects of CBD. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a pothead or anything, but to be honest, I was one of those people when I was younger who was kind of judgmental about people who use CBD, who are into like cannabis or like THC and all that. And I am just beginning to open my eyes to the magical benefits of CBD and, uh, <laughs> and just, it, it really doesn't deserve to be in the same category as like drugs. It's not a synthetically uh, synthesized, synthetically synthesized, uh, what, how do you call it? It's not artificially synthesized um, kind of a compound. It's uh, CBD and THC, they all occur naturally in nature through, you know, cannabis sativa or ganja as is, is known in India. Well, I'm not telling everybody to be a pothead or anything, but it's just that I, the discoveries that I've recently made about, I've always been kind of fascinated with hemp, the hemp plant, but uh, CBD, man, it's been changing my life. I was, I had joint problems. I have injuries everywhere. And um, as soon as I started taking CBD, and it's just been changing my life. I can't even explain it. It's anti-inflammatory. It activates your immune system. It definitely helps your neurotransmitters. Um, dopamine and serotonin helps your sleep. And I've, I've never had better quality sleep than, than recently. And uh, <laughs> now I'm not telling everybody to smoke, but it's just that I, I've only recently realized that uh, it could have very beneficial implications for depression and anxiety patients. Um, and if you are naturally like overreactive, ruminating, and very sensitive to depression and anxiety, then I think this is really like a God-given, nature-made medication for, uh, for your psyche, for your mental health. So, I mean, don't just take it with a grain of salt because it's not at all scientifically supported. But there are studies that suggest that this uh, plant, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, and, and, and the CBD compound has amazing effects for your, for your neurotransmitters, uh, balance, and, and um, not, not just anti-inflammatory, but your immune system as well. So it, it has very strong implications for your brain, and, and um, it, it's been amazing to learn about that recently. I am not telling everybody to be a pothead. That's not what I'm saying. CBD, you can just get it at a CBD store uh, most of the time, although you can go the other way. But anyways, uh, that's it. Thank you so much. I will talk to you later uh, when I'm in the middle of a fast or when I'm done, I guess. Bye-bye. Happy Ramadan.